Mm -hmm. Yep, I heard it too. There's some bad storms rolling in. Uh, that's been the nature of things these last few weeks. Apparently August is now June. Whatever, we're getting rain, I'll take it. Umbrella's down, got some cushions. Need to remember to take that tape measure inside. Been doing some filming over here. I grabbed one of these, what are these called? Like box planters, deck planters. It was empty and it fits right in the spot. And I thought maybe if I stuff that down in this crevice, it might keep this areca palm from blowing over. Because it does blow over when we have really strong wind. But it always, the yucca always catches it. So I, don't know, I just figured, you know, why not? Just give it a try. It was a pretty snug fit, so that should provide some extra protection for it. This will be a good test for the sandbags that are over here. See if that'll hold the queen palm up. I don't have anything set in place to hold that one. What it is, I guess I just have to find out. It's supposed to storm off and on all day and they're saying they might be pretty bad. This week's video. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I, I haven't gotten any filming done this week. I did take the dogs to the dog park for Toby's birthday. So I'll roll that right after this so you can watch the dogs play. I've been working on a video. <laughs> that is for some reason taking me an eternity to get done. Uh, this has never happened before, but it's, I'm like four or five days into it and that, that is very much taken away from any time to vlog anything out here. So I figured I'd pick up the camera before these storms roll in so we can have a look at the yard before it potentially gets blown away again. Because again, we're doing the spring thing in August. Like, oh look, the bananas are so pretty when they're not shredded. And the lighting's really good right before storms, as long as the sky isn't green. Like, isn't this good lighting? Look, everything's fluorescent. You can really see the color on everything. I need to stake these up. That needs to be done. And this popped up two more flowers on it. I wasn't expecting that to happen. I was thinking there might be maybe one more. I'm laughing because I just took a step and almost completely fell over. I did a lot of squats yesterday. I was working out yesterday and I got curious to like, how many squats can I do before I just can't do any more? 342. I'm okay with that number. I didn't do, I did them in turbo, no pull, turbo, no pull, no, 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 turbo. Yeah, get out. Oh, he's in trouble. He, he knows he's in trouble because he wasn't supposed to get in. I told him no pull right before I picked up the camera and multiple times between things that I've been saying. There's lightning, bud. You can't get in there. Uh, yeah. 342. No, that was in sets, not in a row. But now today I keep having moments where like my leg just kind of like, <laughs> just sort of stopped working. That's been fun. Also a reason that nothing gardening will be happening today. Not just because of the storms, because I can't really use my legs like a normal human. I'm hopeful and expecting the storms won't be that bad. You know, the weather, they tend to make things sound worse than they are sometimes, but just to be safe. Wanted to have a look at things while they're nice and cleaned up, because last week's video was me cleaning up the garden after a storm. I didn't want to repeat that. Although if the garden does get blown away in another storm, then we will we'll be repeating it because it's a vlog and that's what's going on. You see how shaky the camera is? It's because that's how my body, like these things, they're not working right. Oh uh, yeah, there it is. Last looks before the storms. We'll pick up later get some stuff done. I mostly want to go around actually and check up on my aeroids because with all the humidity and everything we're having, this is a good time to be doing repot. So I need to see what needs to be repotted. So that's more than likely what would be going on in the video. Oh yeah, but here, Toby's birthday, dog park. Here's that. So that's what lantanas look like when they get full sun. All these years I've been growing them. I've never had those fun little balls. I've only ever seen that when I've been other places. I'm at the dog park. Hence the barn. I don't know why I thought that would signify a dog park. It's Toby's birthday. Happy birthday, Toby. 13. Wasn't going to, I'll zoom in. There's a person over there. Wasn't going to film this, but I saw the lantana and I was like, well, that's beautiful. The cannas are nice too. Cannas are rough a lot of places this year because of the drought, but now we've had plenty of rain so you can see where they're Starting to bounce back. There's so much. So much panting. You're, hey, Turbo, get in your seat. What are you doing? Yeah, you know the rules. Yeah, stay in your seat. Good boy. I swear, this dog, he's peed three times in the past 30 seconds. So is that one. You guys gonna run around and play? Okay, okay. 
Toby. Hey, Tobes, having so much fun, Toby. Having so much fun. Where are all your friends? No one's here. Like, no one. There are a couple other dogs, but they aren't very friendly. Why take your dog to a dog park if it's a jerk and doesn't get along with other dogs? I don't understand that. That's all right. They're still having fun. That's all that matters, Toby. Just did a big lap. The whole field. Got to smell a lot of things. That's a lot of walking. A lot of very slow walking and sniffing. Sniffing everything. And then there's Turbo, who is making friends with everyone. By everyone, I mean the two other dogs and three other humans that are here. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, Turbo. Good boy. You gonna keep playing? You gonna keep playing? Maybe not. Yeah, good pup cup. Yeah, good pup cup. Yeah, Toby. Oh boy, Toby. Happy birthday, Toby. Yeah, good boy, baby. I don't really have some kind of smooth transition. I forgot to film basically anything yesterday. Storms didn't do anything because it didn't really storm. Weather forecast was way off, but it did drizzle for a good, I don't know, 12, 18 hours. The garden looks great. The plants and everything, they're all clean and bounced up. It feels so nice out because it's humid, but there's a breeze. It's starting to feel like June, even though it's August. And look at the sky. I don't know, is it my sunglasses or is it the sky? It's a little bit my sunglasses, but it's also the sky. Are you done yet, Tobes? I'm just getting ready to leave and both the dogs decided they need to come outdoors. Did you go to the grass or am I gonna to have to pick up a pile of poo somewhere on the patio? He probably pooped on the patio. Hey, Turbo, I'm going to go to the pet store. I'm gonna to go to PetSmart or Petco and, uh, no, PetSmart for sure, actually get some repti bark because I know I have a few aeroids out here that need to be repotted. Dean McDowell, it's not doing anything. It needs a larger container, which I think I knew was going to be the case when I put it in the container that's in. Probably talked about that when I potted it up. And then the, uh, who are you? The elbow back here. It's still in like a tiny little four inch container and it could really use something bigger. You're not sticking to this palm trunk, are you? I had to rip this off the palm trunk not that long ago, and someone told me, they go, oh, the elbows, they don't stick to things. The Borgianas, their little aerials don't grab onto things. I, I don't know about that. I had to rip this guy right out of the trunk of that palm tree. The Deliciosas, I know for sure, they're more of a just like drop their weight around and don't necessarily cling to things, but the that elbow, it was really in there. And then we get back and do some updates on the aeroids that were in the video prior to this one. The new ones from Equigenera. Walk around some more, see what else needs some repots. Just think it makes sense to... Oh, come on, man. Dry your ass off now. It's like 68 degrees. It's early. Not very warm at all. Cool, chilly morning. And you just... Why? To be fair, that's on me. I didn't tell them no pull. But you need to shake off, Turbo. Go shake off. Okay, can you do that like five more times so I don't have to towel you off? My arms hurt. <laughs> My legs are barely working. Dry yourself off. Nah, okay, I'll do it. And then uh, pet store. I don't know if I'm gonna film at the pet store. We'll see. Wanna hear a funny story? My body is so programmed to going to Lowe's that on the way to PetSmart, which is right there, I pulled in. I didn't even mean to do this. I pulled into the parking spot and like, as I was pulling in, I was like, wait, 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 no, I'm supposed to be going over there. But uh, now I'm here, so may as well go in and see what's going on at Lowe's. I do, I kind of wanted to poke around the plastic pottery just a little bit because I have a feeling I'm going to have trouble finding something to put the McDowell in so, since I'm here. But why not? Everybody likes popping by Lowe's, even though this Lowe's, they're not, they're not, they don't have a lot of plants here. So smart, I can barely move my legs. Let's find another place to walk around. Ugh. That's dramatic. The legs are working, just not <laughs> in a very coordinated fashion. A lot of hibiscus for this time of year. Fresh hibiscus, don't normally see that in August. Generally just mums everywhere, they're pretty. Kind of a marigold yellow color yeah the music way too loud to really show much of anything i have to talk at all times or else this video will get demonetized so there's some philodendrons alcasias that usually have spider mites mums not going to talk about mums it's not time yet it's stupid it's august it's not, it hasn't even been summer through that oh 
not even gonna talk about it. I'm not ready to talk about mums. Got to give that a few more weeks. Hostas look nice. Everything's pretty fresh. Actually, it's kind of surprising. Okay, pottery-wise, not seeing anything that I would be willing to spend money on. That's the right size, anyway. Some of the larger pots I kind of like, but everything that's smaller, like between 14, 16 inch, just that, I don't know, not my style. Which try to do my best to not make too harsh of a declarative statement when it comes to pottery because somebody might like it and I don't want to offend. Just for me, not seeing anything here that I would want to spend my money on that I think would also be appropriate and look nice for what I'm doing. That's all. Kind of like this. Not the right size. And, of course, the only one that's not on sale, I don't have a use for it, so I'm not going to get it. But I kind of like it. They have bubble planters, which some of y'all have been telling me that they had them here. These are similar to the ones that I have. They are different. I don't... I have a thing about muted colors, which I know is very trendy right now. But when I see colors like this, I just... It's like, it's like, it's not trying hard enough. <laughs> that look faded don't make me feel like I have nice, clean, new things. They make me feel like, oh, I have old things, which there's nothing wrong with, but I would rather go secondhand for that kind of vibe. I like, remember back in the day when the jeans had all the holes in them and all the old folks were like, why would you pay money on jeans that have holes in them? Kind of like that. Not that this is like that, but it's, it's I don't want to offend anybody. Don't get offended. Everybody can have their own taste. I can see the appeal. It's just not for me. That's all. Calm down. These could work. I guess. Yeah, maybe. Oh, really, it's a perfect size. It's not too deep, plenty wide, but I'm not crazy ab about the color. I mean, it's just white, off-white, and I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the bottom. Hmm, I'll spend money on something if I don't love it. What I should be looking at are cushions for the glider because all of these are on clearance. Oh, I have a few plants happen. We'll talk about it later. I'm at PetSmart, hey honey. Look at, look at Sassy. Look at her, look at this little angel. She's so cute. Does that say 8623 spade? I can't read that, it's too far away. She is so stinking adorable. Remember what I'm here for, here for the fur bark. Got my eyes peeled on adoptions and oh, she's cute. Open door animal sanctuary. Oh, nice stretches. Did you miss me? I miss you too, baby. Someone knows that there's no toys here. I think those are for you. They are for you. It was buy three, get one, and they were all marked down to, I think, four fifty. dollars You got a flip-flop and a glass that says juice detox. It's trying to be funny. They had a whole bunch of these things. This is the only one I could find that didn't really... I don't like to buy him toys. Like He's probably past an age where I have to worry about this. But I don't like to buy him toys that have faces on them. You know, never wanted to raise him to think that it's okay to tear something up that has a face. But I'd say at two years old... Don't think he cares about that so much anymore. And then a bunch of little squeaky things for the pool. So one of those was free. And we got bark and do some repots. Which toy do you want? Which one do you want? You want all of them? Just let you pick it out. There you go. You decide. So many toys. Which one are you gonna get? Which one? Too many choices? It's, oh, you're gonna try and get all of them? I don't know if you're gonna be able to do that. You got a big mouth. You're going for the cocktail. Yep, that's my boy. Good boy, Turbo. Oh, that's so much fun. Loves his cookies. He did not need more toys. He doesn't destroy toys, so he really doesn't need more. Baskets full of them, but if they, you know, they were acquired, so if there's some, some new things for him. Boom. An octopus. Tennis ball. <laughs> good boy, good boy. You don't want that. You can't have the bag. Nothing, Tobes? You don't care about the toys? Such a difference. So much contrast between these two. I bet he'll care about a cookie. I also got him a cookie, I assume. It's, it's on clearance from Pride Month. I don't know. It was a dollar, so I said, okay. I bet they'll have fun eating that. How do you open this thing? Here you go, Tobes. Toby. There you go. Got cookies for you. There you go. Happy birthday, belated. More treats for Toby. And I don't like the lens. I gotta clean that off. Turbo, where'd you go? Wanna come outdoors? Toby, do you wanna just wanna chill, don't you? Pick out a toy. The tiny one. You want the smallest toy possible? Okay. I wonder where a pumpkin is. There's the new floor. Laid some of it out just to have a look and see what it would look like. There's pumpkin. Hi honey, how you doing? Can you say hi? Give everybody a sniff. 
That was nice. Good sniffies. You so cute, pumpkin. Such a sweetheart. Love you, bite. Okay, come on. Let's go outside. Good boy. Oh, you got Switch to the octopus, huh? It's gonna be fun when it gets sopping wet in the pool. All right, well, here's what I got. I'm gonna put the umbrella up. Yeah, this harsh lighting and have a look at what I picked up at the store. I mean, it's right, you can see it right now. Not much surprise left. I'm gonna stay set up over here. There's a little bit more shade, not a lot, but slightly less noise from what I can tell with the microphone and a nice change of scenery, kind of. Okay, well, first up, got the fur bark bedding. It's just a nice size chip that's pretty good for aeroids, made for reptiles. I normally only buy this stuff when it's on sale. This was 30 bucks, not on sale, which I, it's an okay price, but I would really prefer to actually order it from a plant supplier and support them. But this is, it was all very last minute. So here we are. It's good stuff. Grabbed a blue star fern because I love them. And the one I had rotted out during the winter time, I had it sitting in a spot in the growth space where I think that the water, every time I was watering the other plants was just, I think it was being wicked up from the bottom of the container because I always pull these off. I'm gonna pull that one off too if I'm thinking about it. And uh, yeah, it rotted. I'd had it for years, so that was unfortunate. And these are one of those plants where they became somewhat trendy. They got harder to find and the cost on them went up quite a bit, which is surprising to me because aren't these basically weeds down in Florida? Like whenever I'm down in the South, I see these things all over the place, sticking out of the trunks of palm trees and nooks, crannies, what have you. But up here, 20 bucks, which I'd say is worth it because they are generally pretty long lived plants. Also grabbed some long fiber sphagnum moss to mix and help hold moisture. I'm repotting the aeroids. I grabbed a Tillandsia cyanate. It's one of my favorites. Videos on these before. The coloration on this one sucks. Big time sucks. They should be much more vibrant pink than this, but I just don't see those for sale very often anymore. Not in person anyways. But the thing I like the most about this Tillandsia is the fragrance, along with having a beautiful inflorescence here when it actually is that nice pink that it's supposed to be. Let's put up a single purple flower at a time that alternates through this pad in here. Every day opens up a new one, so you have a nice succession of blooms and it smells fantastic. It's a very sweet, kind of cinnamony fragrance. So I was happy to see that, mostly because I have seen them around. It's not like they vanished from the market, but every time I was seeing them, they were done blooming. It, once they have flowers up to about the midway point or a little bit higher, I don't usually buy them because they're halfway done. And then what's the point anymore? Because I like them for the fragrance. This one hasn't started to open up any of them, which is great. So the last longer, I also ended up, I got the pot. I walked away from it and did some other things, looked at cushions, didn't see any cushions that I liked enough to spend the money on for that glider that I have over here. And I was about ready to leave and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want that pot. So I went back and I got it. I think that that will look nice in the house and some of the rooms that are being remodeled. That was another thing I didn't, mention when I was talking about how I'm not crazy about a lot of the colories, colories, but a lot of the colors in the new pottery. It's mostly just that it, like, it wouldn't work in my house. Not necessarily saying that I think that they're ugly or anything like that. It's just, I would have to have a completely different home. It doesn't work with any of my stuff. This is pretty neutral though. And I did end up getting it as you, I'm sure you noticed cause it's sitting right here. Only because proportionately it just seems like the perfect size for the McDowell. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to get my drill and pop a hole in the bottom of this thing. You can't just stand. Okay, good boy. He's starting to learn just from the tone of my voice, the way I say his name. He's like, okay, I'll move. Dog has a talent for just standing right in front of me. For drainage, drill a quarter to half inch hole from the outside. Why not just put the hole in here? You just put a little hole right there and put a plug in it like do with all the other pottery. What's the big deal? Quarter to half inch didn't seem quite enough to me. I want nice big drainage in here. Is that a, what is this made out of? Plaster? Styrofoam coated fiberglass. Okay, it looks nice on the outside. That is not worth $40. It feels like a homemade pinata. So that if you're wondering like the texture, it's very, it doesn't feel sturdy. Well, I guess in comparison, I have to gauge things more appropriately. Like I was just at the nursery in the last vlog and there were pots about this size that were $130 a piece, but they were nice glazed ceramic pottery. It doesn't matter. It's a nice size pot. And I do, I actually like it. It just doesn't go with anything else I have, but that's okay. I've started to take the plastic off, but I'm going to leave that on there because that helps keep the pot clean while I get the McDowell moved into a larger pot here. What's that stuck on? 
All right, you get the Dean over here. You can see, yeah, look at that. It's all floppy. Entire runner's moving out of the pot. Has an old leaf here that I need to cut off of it. Been growing well, put up a bunch of new growth. Has some insect damage. You know, the ants, they get onto these leaves sometimes and they make little spots from the sap. Nothing that's really devastating to the plant. Considering what the roots are looking like in here, if they're looking pretty good, then I may try and just mimic the same blend I did with this originally, which was more of a potting mix with a lot of bark in it as opposed to just going straight up bark. With some of the crawly philodendrons, mostly the McDowell and the Gloriosum, I've had better luck with them in more of an aeroidy soil than a bark blend. This is difficult to get out because I waited a bit too long to do this repot see the top of the pot smaller than the sides. Generally avoid using those types of containers for plants with quick roots because of how difficult it is to go ahead and get the plant back out without shredding the roots on it. I feel like this is it's gonna come up. Oh there we go. Look at that. Look at all those roots. I had some clap back when I repotted this about doing it in a potting mix instead of just going with the straight up bark traditional aeroid blend and I was like, well, I guess we'll just wait and see. And I'd say that looks pretty good for what, five, six months. So this blend, it was all purpose potting mix. Good amount of perlite. There was a handful of aquarium gravel. It's aquarium gravel that's meant for growing plants in there as well with some sphagum. Basically I took an aeroid blend and did it probably about 50-50 to an all-purpose potting mix. All right, and here's what I have blended up. You can't see that. A little bit better. Yeah, so since this is a much larger container, I've gone more in the range of, I would say, 30% of soil, which it's just a peat. That's all it is. It's just peat. Coconut, peat, whatever the case is. Something with some more moisture retention to it. So the prior one more 50-50 blend of a, just a standard aeroid mix, meaning bark chip, pumice, perlite, coconut, all that stuff. With this one, I went heavier on the bark chip and stuff for aeration because this is a much larger container. So I have to be more aware of how long it's going to take for things to dry out in here, right? It was not enough soil. Blend up some more and get this thing potted up. Top that off, get some more in there. Pull some out to make room for the McDowell. And when I push this down, it sort of bounces back up. The main thing is that when you squeeze it, it falls right apart, has zero hold to it. So that's how I know that this will be oxygen rich. That's also why the hole I drilled in the bottom of this thing was massive. And in hindsight, I really probably could have done I think two or three of those holes in this and it would have been just fine. But, uh, well, I didn't, so here we are. I also didn't want to deviate very much from the mix that's already in here because I didn't want to tease these roots out to get the old soil blend out from those roots. And uh, it's important to make sure that, well, they're compatible. I don't want there to be a higher moisture holding capacity in here than out here or vice versa. I want it to be about the same. I don't want this potted up about like this. It'll just have to straighten itself out and see where those roots are. That's where those need to be in contact with the soil. It's because it was hanging over the edge of the pot. I know it kind of wonky for a while because like I said, it's going to have to adjust itself over time and fix its <laughs> odd growth stature. It can be a thing when you buy cuttings is that sometimes they can take off in a wonky direction if you allow them to, which uh, I suppose is what happened here, letting it hang over the side of that pot. It's only been hanging over the edge for about six weeks but that's really all it takes to get some weird growth on these is that going to be in contact if i let it lay down and relax yeah that's good to look at this and make sure that this is laying down on top of the soil see those roots make sure they're in contact not necessarily buried ideally with crawlers it is nice to use a rectangular container i get into this headspace with that where i'm like so what am i someday going to have like a nine foot long rectangular container. No, probably not going to do that. If you this is the opportunity for the plant to straighten itself out, get a nice root mass going, and then I can chop it and prop it and do whatever I need to do with more even growths on it. It depends a lot when I order plants from cuttings where I have to have them for a spell of time where they're just kind of weird and wonky. There's one other thing I was thinking about doing with this. Star fern. Why not? Why not put a companion plant in there? The whole reason I got it was because I saw the pot and I was thinking about the color of the McDowell, the Dean McDowell, and how I just, I really, I like the idea of this being up there as, uh, you know, ground cover. And the star ferns 
are <laughs> adaptable to a wide range of conditions. They also like to be in a potting blend that's pretty well drained and doesn't hold on to moisture for too long. And this had three plants in it. Do you see how I just pop that right apart? You see those fuzzy roots in there? The main thing is that you don't tear those up. It's not gonna just like drop dead if you do, but generally you can get a nice pull out of these. Okay, I got four. This little nugget right here that can technically be divided out as well, as long as you hold on to some of those roots, you have a whole nother one. Now with these, I did go through and shake them loose, try and get some of that potting mix out of there. Not a ton. There's still some in there, but it's mostly up at surface level. That's good. That's good. The drip just turned on. Now there's water spraying everywhere over here. I'm going to finish this up very, very quickly. Make sure those fuzzy roots stick up above the soil. They will be totally fine. They'll crawl along the top and spread just like the philodendron will. The fuzzy. There's the fuzzy. You going to focus? My hands are dirty. Don't make me press the button. Come on. There we go. See it? The fuzzy. That needs to be above. It can be partially submerged into the mix. Just wouldn't want it to be down there too far. Back the camera away so the drippers stop splashing on it. I need to cut out the oldest growth on here because it's a waste. It's yellowed out. It's not using it anymore. And I could stake this entire thing up. That's an option. Fill the whole thing with stakes that aren't going to hold very well because this is such a loose mix. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put it over in an area of my garden where the drip emitters are going to hit this. I'm going to make sure that the foliage is facing the opposite direction of where the sun comes up in the morning. I'm going to let this correct itself. I usually have better luck with that. Letting the plant do it on its own, let it just sort itself out. When I use the stakes, and you force it, then once I remove the stakes, the plant hasn't always taken to where I would want it to be. And that's more of a me thing. It's because become reliant on the stakes. Do you, does that make any sense? So once I have the stakes in here, I'm not going to be thinking about, have I been facing this opposite from the sun? Have I been rotating this every couple of weeks like I should be so that it will correct its growth? But by not having the stakes in there, I no longer have an option. If I want this to be a nice looking plant, then that's what I have to do. And I like that. I think that this looks good. I'll go set this down and uh, get the plastic off of there. And just imagine in several weeks when the leaves are standing upright, how incredibly beautiful that's going to be. It's going to be gorgeous. I know it's a bad idea, but I still really, really want to do it. I like the way that plank looks behind the Monstera. Even though I know it's not going to attach to it. Not likely. Outside, maybe if I set this place someplace, or really if I were to attach a drip to the very top, so that, that wood always stays moist. I think it attached to it. It's cork. It could handle the moisture. But I did. Why? What would the point be? There's only like another from where the base of the plant is underneath those leaves. It has like another foot and a half to go. And then I'm going to have to do it all over again. And I'll have to figure out how to get it off the wood. So sorry. I forgot to turn the fan off. See if I can use the machete to turn that off. There we go. But it would look cool, wouldn't it? I think that would look nice. I had a trellis out here. Just one of those bamboo trellis. I had two of them and I was doing some cleanup last week and I picked them up and threw them in the yard waste because I complete I forgot that why I was holding. I needed one for the elbow and another one for the vanilla bean. That's why I had them and now I have to get new ones. Also didn't come prepared to do a planting like this because with something like this with a cork or a plank I should say in the back of the pot I need a brick in the front of the container to keep it from tipping over. That pot back there is the only thing that's holding that upright right now. I don't know why in my head I feel like if I look hard enough I'll find a brick. Like there'll just magically be a brick laying around somewhere out here. I mean, it, that wouldn't be all that shocking here, right? I feel like that is something that might happen in my backyard. But it doesn't seem likely. Oh, you know what though? Actually, I might have some little pieces of stone from the old wall that I could pull from. Oh, and there's the McDowell. I'm not thrilled about it either, but it's, it just doesn't make sense to stake it up because then the runner on the plant, words are hard right now, don't know why. The runner of the plant won't be in contact with the soil anymore, and it's just, it needs to sort itself out. It'll be fine. Remember the banana that got blown over in the storm like a week and a half ago, and I didn't pull it back up? I said, I'm just going to let it fix itself. We can go have a look at that in just a moment. I can show you it fix itself. I wonder, these are the leftover brick shards, rock shards, from the old wall in the front yard. And I think, well, is it just that one? Yeah, this might be the only one, but that's better than nothing. Hey, Terps, how you doing, baby? Drop that down in there. Here we go. Took care of that. Come down here, have a look at that banana. Look at that. And that was at a probably a 45 degree angle just a week or so ago, and 
fixed itself right up. I didn't touch it. I mentioned when talking about this that I've had issues with bananas where if this has happened, if they've gotten blown down like they were before, specifically with the inset Morelli eyes, and then I correct it, I think it does more damage to the roots than to just leave it alone, give it some time, see if it'll correct itself. And if it does correct itself, it's just gonna end up putting up an even stronger root system. This one too, this one got blown over and it's straightened itself out really, really well. Oh, I need to get in here and prune all that lower stuff out. I didn't even notice how much stuff that's not, stay on task. That's not important right now, stay on task. Okay, well, I just poked around the garage didn't see a support that I really liked for the elbow. So it just, again, wasn't, wasn't prepared. I don't know why I was thinking wood plank. I know better than that. Like it's doable, but not a great idea. It could wrap the whole thing in moss and put the wicking cord and moss and everything on there and turn to a self-watering pole, but it would make more sense to do that with an actual pole than something with a wood base, even though it's cork. I don't have the materials to do all that stuff right now. Oh, but look at what I did find in the grow space. Little, Alocasia Jacqueline tuber that apparently fell out from the others, which did not do well this spring. That's why you don't see them out here. This little chunk of tuber that was hanging out in the plant shelves all dried up, had a leaf on it. So go ahead and get that potted up. Did I do a pothos on here or an epipernum panatum? I have both that could use a new container. Panatum is over here. It's done a good amount of growing. It's a variegated one starting to finish straight has growth it's going all over the place out here up and around the base of this palm tree you can see there's it's just it's a lot it's grown a lot a lot i even debated maybe just taking a cutting from this plant and sticking it over there and leaving this one as it is because with this one i can keep adding to this pole and wrap it up that pole i just need to go get another pole but i think that i should be able to get something that will fit right in there or pothos i've wanted to do a mandula pothos on some sort of support for a long time. I have much better luck with pothos on planks than I do monsteras for sure. And even the epiprenum, I don't know, the epiprenums, pinatums, I should say, because we're talking about pothos here, so those are both epiprenums. One's ara, the other one, pinatum. Those are great on planks too. Let me go look at my mandulas, and I should have done that before even bringing it up, and I don't know why I'm asking y'all. This isn't live. I have to make my mind up on my own here. I think I'm going to go with the... Uh, Mandula, mandula, mandula. Don't care how you say it. It's not what this is. This is a cutting I pulled from a different pothos that I have a snow or marble queen. People say and argue that there's no such thing as a snow queen. They're all marble queens. It's just some have more variegation, variegation. Some have more variegation than others do. And I have one that I've had since 2018. And the variegation on this one is just insane. And this particular growth that this one put out is coming out a more of a chartreuse or yellowy green than the rest of the plant. The rest of the plant is very white with lots of speckling in it, but you can see here there's more of a yellow on this particular branch right here on this stem that came out of the soil. So I wanted to prop that into something on its own and see if it'll keep doing that. That has nothing to do, that's nothing to do with this, sorry. I don't know why I'm sorry, it's a vlog. You're here to listen to me talk, right? The Mendula, <laughs> one of my favorite pothos. They have really neat foliage on them. Great, excellent, fantastic variegation. The thing that I like about them isn't just their variegation. It's that the leaves are more rounded and they're cupped. As you can see in here, see how they're cupped like that? Isn't that cool? And I have one, this is gonna be interesting to explain. Underneath one of my larger fish tanks, I have a filter. So the water goes from the tank down into the stand into a big container that's the filter and then it gets pumped back up into the tank and in there i have a mandula pothos that's starting to produce really big leaves on it not very heavily variegated because i don't have like great lighting down there for the plant just like cheap like old compact fluorescent bulbs i don't think they even sell them anymore and i assume that's why the variegation is waning on them but the leaves still look really cool they're big and cup shaped you'll probably see them in a few weeks because i have to take that tank apart when the new floors go down and move it. So at some point, the next few weeks, there's gonna be a pool or pond out here with Oscars in them. Haven't figured, I don't even wanna think about how I'm gonna handle that right now. Let's see, yeah, there's the backstory. That's why I would like to get a mandula put up onto a pole. When things are nice and humid, pothos, not very picky about what they'll grab onto. Pothos will grab onto this plank right here, no problem. I would prefer the potting mix for this be more just general potting soil forward than chunky aeroid mix that I just used for the McDowell 
but I think the pothos will still appreciate it. They're not picky plants and uh, it's really, it's only going to help the plant, but it also means I'm gonna have to water the plant a lot more frequently, like a lot more frequently. Actually remembering that I'm gonna have to water this more frequently, let me go ahead and take some of that back out because I want to make sure there's a big enough lip in here that I can dump water in there without it rushing over the sides of the container. It's always a good idea to do that. Should I, I should do a slow release in here. That's the coat, 15, 8, 23, water dispersed. So it's not one that's gonna be reliant on temperature when water hits it it will move through. So having it underneath the root zone, not really entirely necessary. It'd be more impactful to have it around the roots and above it so that it can wash down around the plant. I'm sure everybody's ready for me to just shut up and go ahead and get this plant in here at this point, right? Probably. Also, another reason that I want to do the pothos over the uh, whatever it was, the pinnatum in here, is because I need a hanging basket because one of my hanging baskets, all the prongs broke on it. Like it has one left, so I have a plant that's hanging up just by one little thing. Being cheap, what can I say? I do not want to know what is going to be running around the root ball in here. In the summertime, I keep my pothos in a fairly shaded area. It gets a good amount of morning sun, but it's on the ground, which is when you invite lots of critters into your plants. And the area where these are, I always see centipedes, so I'm going to be pretty quick. Oh, that's not too bad. That soil's nice and loose too. I don't know why I was expecting that to just be a mess in there, but I forgot that I had repotted this not all that long ago. I think last fall maybe. So that's why that's already in a blend that's not too different from the one that I'm using. Cheating if I keep repositioning the plant so that I can get these growths to have at least some attachment up here onto the pole. Give the plant a little twist. That way these leads have some contact. If that wouldn't, I can just put that right in there. That's perfect. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my brain is just scrambled from a different video that I've been trying to get filmed out here. It's not a complicated video by any means at all. It's just the constant distractions from the on and off machinery and trying to make it a quiet, calm video. It's been a challenge. And I didn't mention, probably should have, but one of the other reasons I was hesitant to put the that was a horrible sound. To put the Monstera in this container is because it's so tall. And when it comes to just plants that are going to be likely to rot, that Monstera is much more likely to rot than the Pothos. The more area you have here, the more moisture there can be under the root zone. Get some of that continuous release in there. Lightly work it down. Doesn't have to be down very far. Okay, and there it is. I will have adjusted the volume down because I don't hate y'all. This is why I usually put towels down underneath containers if I'm doing videos where I'm potting things that so there's not that screechy sound. This is good. I like this. I could go through and take some more of these if I wanted to and start attaching them onto this plant. Can do that with a gentle staple or string. The main thing is just that the nodes down here, can, is that even showing? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Nodes in here. See where those roots coming out? Those aerial roots, those would be what would grab on to a nice moist surface if they were attached to it. Generally speaking, outdoors, I have never in my life had to manually attach a pothos, an epiprenum aria, to anything before as long as it had even the most subtle, gentle contact with the surface and that surface gets some moisture on it, it will attach itself. And then I guess I didn't explain, I shouldn't just assume that people know what's going on here. With the Epiprenum arias, the golden pothos and all the different types, whether it be a neon pothos, a snow, that's not a thing, marble queen, mandula, jade, you name it, there are a lot of them. These and a lot of other aeroids, climbers, aren't going to start producing really big leaves until they attach themselves. In nature, all these parts right here that we have in the hanging baskets that come and drape over the edge, they'll either be dangling off the end of a tree branch or whatever they're growing on and continually going out longer and longer and longer until they attach to something, until they come in contact with something. Then they'll grab on and climb upward. Same thing on the ground. That's mostly where you'll see it is. Lots of little leaves on the ground and they'll hit a vertical surface that they can grow up and go boom. And that's when they produce those bigger leaves. But anything is neat, when you're looking at a pothos, in a hanging basket. We see them all the time, right? Pothos are all over the place. What we're actually looking at is the plant search party. This is what it would be doing so that it can find something to grow up into a great big huge plant. This will have to stay moist. That's not going to be an issue. I have it. I'll be putting this in a pot, in a pot. I'll be putting this in a spot 
where the drip hits this regularly by mist. So it should grab onto that no problem. I've had pothos out here just about every year they grab onto something and I don't even realize that they've done it until I'm moving the plants inside and there'll be a, like just an area along this rock wall back here where there are just giant leaves growing up behind everything. Not picky or finicky plants when it comes to attaching themselves to things. The Monstera, there was something I was gonna say about, but I don't remember what it is. It did. No, no, never mind. Oh, the plank. Just mention it in case somebody asks. That's actually a part of an umbrella holder that I got from Home Goods years ago. It was a tube. So it was a whole bunch of these planks that were twined together and it fell apart and I held onto the planks so I could use them for things like this. Cedar planks are usually a better way to go because you have more control over the height. You can make cuts on these. I will have to add to this, which I don't think will be a problem because the other planks are about the same size. When I do that, I can just add right to the top and I can use a brace on the back to attach them to each other so it can keep going up higher and higher and higher. This is really just to get it started. I will definitely have to add on to this to get it to go up higher. And I like the way this looks more than just a regular wood plank. It has some more character to it, a little bit more of a jungle vibe. Oh, that's way too dark. Oh, what did that do? It, like did a weird little thing. What's happening here? Other way. Nope, oh, that's too dark. Okay. Okay, that didn't work out. Got a new ND filter, which is going to be so nice for filming during the day. You like how I'm doing this in the video instead of in a test shot where I can learn how to use it? I just thought it looked kind of cool. Get POV. Should I be doing ASMR? That's pretty good. Yes. I like that. So it's basically sunglasses for the camera. Removes blur from light and all that fun stuff. I decided, pardon the background noise, there's a long company out here to I'm sure you knew what that sound was. The elbow, it's just going in a plastic pot. I don't have any nice looking ceramic pottery that is not, or that is ungla, that's, none of them are glazed on the inside. I did just buy this one, but I don't want to use this for that. The inside of the pot needs to have a finish on it. If it's porous, those roots will attach and make it very difficult to repot the plant. So it's just getting a huge upgrade into this one right here. Again, I am so sorry about the background noise. This is just my life these days. It's very rarely quiet out here. Okay, I think that should be good. I would not normally do a repot this size on a plant unless it were summertime and it were nice and humid and we had a lot of moisture. I should have mentioned that. So the forecast saying we're gonna be having plenty more rain over the next few weeks. So this is an ideal time to repot some aeroids. If I were in the house, I would make sure that I'm just doing a slight bump out on here. There's so much risk when it comes to root rot and everything, if you have too much moisture around the root ball. But I think that this should be totally fine. This is really rooted in there. It's going to be interesting to see how much of this I can get out without doing any damage to those roots. Okay, hey, not bad. Got most of them out. Only if you pulled off the bottom, that's no big deal. It doesn't seem like it's wrapped up too terribly much. Just a little, but not enough where I think that there are going to be any issues with it continuing to wrap. But I'll just give it a little tickle, help flare those out. Go ahead and drop a stake down in there as well to help hold this guy up straight. Easier to do it now when I can decipher the root mass, the old root mass from the new one. Want to anchor it through the original one. Throw a stake into the new soil, just gonna flop around in there. Go quick and easy, slow release. Work that in to the top of the soil. Just a little bit, just a scotch. Make sure to spread it out, not at all concentrated in one spot. I'm not trying to burn the plant. Just wanna make sure that it's within the drip zone. So basically want to when I water the plant, want to make sure that that fertilizer is being dispersed to the actual roots. I think that's pretty good. Huge upgrade. <laughs> Seriously, that's a big upgrade for the plant. It's been a trooper. It's been pretty vigorous. I've had to chop off a few leaves here and there that have gotten scorched, but otherwise been very simple and easy to grow. And I'll order some new stakes for this so I can support it properly. For right now, since I had the blend out here, I figured I should just go ahead and get it repotted while I can. I'd like to use that blend up. I think that that's pretty much everything that was really important to get repotted. Do you want to have a look at the aeroids and what they've done since the last video? That last video <laughs> the haul from Equigenera, that was filmed a couple of weeks ago. So they haven't done much in a couple of weeks, but just about everything has put out a new leaf or started to put out a new leaf. The VGI opened this one up and then had some storm damage on it, unfortunately. But 
I was happy to see it open up a new leaf. Seems happy in there. Not a lot to say. There's not gonna be much to say about any of them. I just figured since I didn't show them potted up in the video, that last video, then go ahead and show y'all what they're looking like now. Yeah, by now I mean in the morning. I have plans. I gotta get out of here. But pick up in the morning. I potted the Jacqueline up down here. I just mentioned that in the video for myself so that I don't forget that that's where I put it. Yeah, I'll check back in the morning and see what's going on with the other plants. Hey, BB, you having a good morning? You've been having fun in the pool. As always, don't even need to say that. I haven't given an update on this. I'm really, I need to stay focused. I have more things to do with the aeroids. But I didn't give an update on the basket and the garden tour. It's doing well. There you go. There's your update. You're welcome. So here are the other two plants that I picked up and we're in that Equigenera Hall. Sun is right on my viewfinder, so it's very difficult to see. This is the Columbia, Philodendron Columbia, that has those gorgeous multi-toned leaves. Only has two leaves on it. One of them could tell was gonna die off, and it did. I just let it yellow. At this point, I could go ahead and cut that off. I got them potted up. So in a container with a standard aeroid mix, not anything similar to what I've been using for the plants in this video so far. It's just, you know, bark chunk coconut bark chunk, pumice, husk, or fiber, you know, it's all that fun, normal, aeroidy mix stuff. And then the Pink Glory, which is looking great. Isn't it beautiful? I think it is. I didn't really talk about some of the characteristics that I expect from this plant in that video. I would expect this one to have slightly longer, more oblong leaves than the regular Gloriosum. Lighter colored foliage, more of a chartreuse -y green, and uh, a pink tone to the veining on the back. Oh, and it's opening up a new leaf. That was the whole point of me giving an update is that there's a new leaf coming up. Isn't it pretty? It's got some nice color on it. Very pink. Not really showing on camera. The sun is right in my viewfinders. I'm just hoping that y'all can see what I'm showing right now. But I thought this is pretty good. Considering it's been close to two weeks since I got these, they're standing upright on their own. They seem to have taken root into their containers. The Gloriosum has a new leaf popping out. The Pink glory, I should say, not gloriosum. It's what I want to see with new plants is them moving forward and not sitting around and hanging out on the struggle bus. It's going to be impossible to show up. There's a little bit of movement down in the middle, some new growth that's coming up from the Columbia. Something I was thinking about, oh, look at that. There's going to be a new flower popping out here on this Catlia. This thing's been flowering like a champ this summer. I was thinking about maybe repotting this dracaena right here and putting it into this container that's what i got the container for was that dracaena aspen white i think is what that one's called but then i fell down this rabbit hole of wondering if maybe i should paint this just with the clear coat something to protect it because it's scratching very easily like you barely touch it it's leaving little marks on there that would also add a lot of luster and shine which normally I like, but I'm pretty into the shadows that I'm getting with this being more of a matte finish. I don't, that's weird too, because I don't usually like a matte finish. That's what it is. When I was at Lowe's and talking about how I'm not all that into the color scheme that's going on, it's the matte finish. It's not necessarily the colors, because I spent, did you ever do that where you realize, sorry, I'm stumbling on my words here. Have you ever done that where you have a certain particular taste in something, but you've never investigated as to what it is about it? So maybe dislike something, but you just never put the time into why you dislike it. You just go, eh, that's not doing anything for me and that's all there is to it. I think for me, it's just that there's no shine because one of my favorite colors is mint, like mint green, but, but it's, I'm, okay, weird with colors. So mint, but when it leans a little bit more towards blue, one of my favorite colors, that and cerulean, specifically the Crayola Crown. Mint, that's a fairly faded, muted color and I love it. It's clean and it's fresh, it's tranquil, it's just, it's, it's a nice color. But maybe it's just when it goes more towards like the peaches and apricots and browns and tans and greens, muted greens. I'm not, I don't like a muted green, it needs to be shiny. I need some shine with my green. Okay, anyways, yeah, I'm not going to repot this right now <laughs> because I uh, am thinking I might go ahead and put a coat of paint on here just to 
toughen up that pot so it doesn't get scratched up. Even though I think it looks good like that, I think a clear coat on there would probably be a smart idea. So I'm going to wrap this up. There's nothing left to do here. Like I said, need to order some poles. Or I might just run by a local nursery and grab some poles for the climbers that need to get climbing. Pardon the background noise from the fan, by the way. I've had to leave it on because the camera has been overheating a lot this morning. It's nice and toasty outside. Yeah, comment down below. Say hi. What's going on in your gardens? Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Has this been bugging anybody else? How long has that leaf been like that? I hadn't even noticed it. These have needed to be pruned off for a while. May as well cut them while I'm over here. There's the jackalin right underneath this leaf here. Can you see it? Lots of shadows. There it is. We'll see what happens with that one. Yeah. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. No, hold on. Forgot to make the point with the McDowell that when it reaches the end of this container, the side of the pot, I'm going to cut it, get all the healthy growth and reset it to the back pull the old growth out and repot that into something else and then it will fill back out in this pot and look much better. That's what I'm doing instead of putting it into a long container. Eventually someday it'll go into a long container, but not now, not yet. Because I don't like long containers. I think they look stupid. <laughs> bye bye.